Okay, I'm recording now. It's uh, May 2nd. I got my buddy Mark Gilbreth, patent lawyer here in Houston. We're walking to uh, to lunch at Del Frisco's. Say hello, Mark. Hello. So Mark is a uh, a buddy of mine who's a really smart chemical engineer, patent lawyer, and kind of a kind of a smart ass libertarian. I don't know. How would you describe your politics? That's probably a good description. <laughs> okay, so. I do a lot of talks about IP policy. I thought you could uh, promote your patent law practice and tell us uh, what your thoughts are on the current patent system and whether you think it's a, a good idea or what you love in life. Wow, that's a that's a big topic. There are several topics. Uh-huh. You know, I think the first one is an observation that I have that a lot of the fees seem to be going up quite a bit. Okay. And um, the recent fee that I noticed that went up a lot was the request for reexamination fee went up to $17,750, up from roughly $2,520, I think is what it used to be. Reexamination fee is higher. Huh. Okay. Well, the reexamination fee went astro- up astronomical. Now, the most recent fees in March, I think it's March 1. Those fees actually have a have a large entity, a small inter- entity, and a micro entity. And now for the large entity, it's twelve thousand, which is significantly less than seventeen seven fifty. And certainly for a small entity, it's a lot less because now it's only six thousand. It's, it's almost a third. So what's the takeaway from this? Because this is kind of boring details for most people. It is boring, but but the, the the whole point is is that the whole idea of doing a reexamination is because in you know, you could take one cynical view and say if the patent office had gotten the answer correct in the first place, you wouldn't need to be doing a reexamination. And they're even the ones that admit that there's a significant new question of patentability that requires, you know, that they're going to allow you to have this reexamination proceed. So they're even the arbiters of it, and they're even the ones that say, yes, it should have been that way, but they're making you pay through the nose for it. That's what I think is kind of interesting. Okay. So let's back up a second. So you are a Kimmy, and uh, you went to law school in Arkansas, right? Well, yeah, Kimmy, for those that aren't quite that initiated, chemical engineer. Yeah. I did study a little bit of electrical engineering. My Arkansas days were for engineering. You weren't smart enough to be electrical, right? You know, I, I wasn't smart enough to be an electrical <laughs> engineer like our esteemed buddy <laughs> Stefan here. That's right. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Stefan's the electrical engineer. <laughs> I, I um, went to law school at the University of Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa. Oh, Arkansas was your undergrad, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, so my football priorities are still with Arkansas, and of course the Southeast Conference, as you being an LSU fan, rightly so. understand. So we, we met when uh, we were both adjunct law professors at South Texas Law School about a dozen, 15 years ago, something like that, right? You were teaching what, patent law practice, or what were you teaching? You know, I was teaching uh, patent law, but it was longer than that. It was 90, uh, 98, I think. Yeah. 98, 99. Yeah, 98, I think it was 98. That's more like 15 years, correct. Well, time, time, time flies, the money flies, so time is money. Um, so, um, or is it the other way around? Time flies, time is money, so money flies. Um, so you have a, a practice, a boutique practice now, and you specialize in this, and uh, you also know my insane libertarian views, and you're you're kind of with me on this, mostly, I think, right? What what are your basic political leanings, would you say? You know, my basic political leanings are less taxes, less spending, less government, and of, of the three of those, if you could just spend significantly less, the other two things will ultimately take care of themselves. Because if you spend less, at some point you're going to have less government, and if you keep spending less, at some point you'll have less taxes. Do you think that really makes sense to say less government? Because government just means a governing body of rules. So if we're talking about the rule against axe murdering, do you, do you want less government in, in that respect? You know, I mean, you don't really want less government, you want the right kind of law, right? Wouldn't you say that's the right way to put it? Well, I'm. you're looking at it from, a, I guess, a regulation law sort of 
side, I'm looking at it from a dollar side, and that is, right. for, for example, if... For example, you're using even size if, as a proxy. Yeah, you're even, a proxy if, for, even if you had a lot of crazy laws and regulations on the books, if, um, you know, like the EPA or whatever enforcement body you want to talk about has no money to enforce those things, do they really matter that much? I guess only to the person that's being chased down. So in other words, if, if we restricted government or the, the state to what we would say are the proper functions of the law, it would be a lot smaller. So that's a proxy. So in other words, size is a proxy because... I guess this is another thing in which size matters, yes. <laughs> Not if you have a Porsche. <laughs> Well, then it's the size of the sticker on the Porsche, I suppose. <laughs> uh, let's take a little detour here since we have some time. Take a hang a Rollo here. On, we're on Lock Lane, by the way. Coincidence? Beautiful, I, beautiful Lock Lane. I think not Lock. John Lock. There you is know. even an E on the end of it, too. Yeah, yeah, John Lock. So anyway, um, okay, so what are your views on, do you, do you think there should be a patent system? Not, I mean, I know that you want there to be one until you retire, right? But in general, do you think society ought to have a patent system? You know, I probably uh, should have read your paper first, and then I'd have have a better idea about this. You know, well, what's um, your knee-jerk impression? You know, well, my knee-jerk impression is probably like a lot of people. It'd be yes, there there should be. You know, should's an interesting word. Um, so would you, do you think people should vote in favor of repealing it if they had the chance? Should they repeal patent law? Well, I, I'll be completely uh, honest. I don't know, I, I don't have a picture in my mind of what the world would look like or even the U.S. would look like if we, quote, mm -hmm. repealed the patent system. Uh, well, I don't here. even know that I understand all the changes that have just taken place to the patent well, system. Well, let me ask you this. Other than that fee we just talked about. Put on here. Let's suppose someone proposed... Uh, Making the patent term go from 17, roughly, roughly 17 years, going down here, to a thousand years and uh, imposing the death penalty for infringement, would you be in favor of that? Well, that sounds a little dire. Uh, you know, painted that way, I would say that's probably a little bit too much. <laughs> a of little a, bit? Come on. You know, just a little bit. <laughs> so the point is you don't want to expand patent protection in scope and well, term. Well, no, I, did, I didn't. I don't know that you can conclude that from what you just said. Uh, I, I'm trying I to said, find I if you think I just said I don't want to go from 17 years to what, what did you say, a thousand? Well, a thousand and plus the death penalty. You know, yeah. if you just said 17 to 18, I, I'd go, I don't know. Right. Yeah, but my point is I'm trying to figure out. So the, the, the model most people have in their minds is they imagine this bell curve where the optimum patent term is somewhere between zero and infinity. And they just assume it's somewhere around 17 years because our, our, our wise Congress has figured that out. Um, I don't think there's any reason to think they have any, any real belief that there is an optimum at all. I don't or, know or, if I've or, ever heard the word wise and Congress used together like that. I, I don't know yeah. that wise is a true, uh, yeah, true. adjective for Congress. All right. Well, you have the right cynical attitude. So. But my view is that it's a, it's a monotonically decreasing slope. Like the optimum term, the shorter the term, the better. But the typical view yeah, is there's a, there's a Gaussian curve. In fact, they think there's many Gaussian curves because there's like one optimum term for pharmaceuticals, one optimum term for software, one optimum, because they don't think there's the right, like you might need three years for software and seven years for pharmaceuticals or whatever. So they think there's all these different optimum terms for different things, although we can't really have a, 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 a panel that can figure that out, so we have to crudely uh, uh, come up with some kind of proxy, which is just one term. So the question is, if you wouldn't want to, if you wouldn't want to expand the term, would you want to shrink the term? You know, I, I don't know. Um, and I guess my view on this, if you're, you know, you're asking me my view, is um, I haven't really thought about those things as much as you have, obviously. The way I look at it is I have clients coming in. I have clients that want to get a patent. Uh, right now the term is, what it's real, you know, to, to clarify for everybody, it's really not 17 years anymore. From, it's, it's 20 It's, it's right. roughly, maybe it's 15 to 16 years, but it's 20 years from the time of filing the effective. 
effectively what that means is roughly 17 years, maybe 18 Because it takes about like three years to, to, to years. what we call prosecute it, yeah, right? So it's, it's about 17. Sometimes roughly. it's five years, six years. but. And if it's for pharmaceuticals, you can get a, an extension because of the FDA uh, regulatory delay issue. So Yeah, so I just tell... You know, I'm basically an information source for my clients. I'm telling them what they can do, and I, my job is to get them a patent right now because that's the system. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think it makes sense for people to want to get patents given that there's a patent system. But the question is, should we have the system? Because, I mean, you can see that there's a cost to the system, right? Your salary, my salary, uh, litigation fees, insurance, higher product cost, reduced competition. There's, there's definitely some cost to the system. Would yeah, you? but you know what I would say is there's probably a cost for any system you have, True. Even, even the most idealized True, system. but not every system is justified based upon a cost. But like so when you say there should be a law against murder, it's because we all agree that murder is just inherently wrong. Now, we might disagree on how much resources we should put into stopping every act of murder because you spend a billion dollars to stop every act of murder, then you're, you're harming people overall worse than if you didn't have that. But in the patent system, it's justified explicitly on the idea that we need this to encourage innovation, and we're all better off in a financial and innovation sense, given the bulk of the system. So it seems to me they're assuming that there's a cost of the system, but there's a benefit that's even far greater than the cost of the system. Yeah, you that's know, sort of an implicit assumption of the argument, the empirical argument. Sorry. You know, my my first introduction to the thought of whether or not the patent system was is kind of answering your question. It was whether or not the patent system was justified. Is there's a number of years ago, and I think it was when you were writing your pat your paper to abolish the patent system right. uh, that maybe some of our listeners have read. Um, that I kind of scoffed at the idea, and I remember talking to it was back when I was teaching patent law in law school. I talked to another patent law professor who knows everything in the world. And I asked him, I said, I said, you know, my buddy is writing this paper and he's saying that the patent system's not justified. And, I, and to me, it seems like... Yeah, that was about 98, 99, and my paper came out in 2000, yeah, so you're, like, you're remembering right. Yeah. seems like all of the um, economists would have long ago justified the patent system or right. not. Yeah. And I asked my esteemed professor friend about this, and I said, isn't there... I said, clearly... The patent system is worthwhile economically and monetarily, and his answer surprised me. Here's a guy that, you know, spent a lot of time in the patent system. He says, "No," he says, "the research is inconclusive. In fact, you can't really prove or disprove that it is helpful or hurtful." There's there's papers on both sides, which surprised me. Yeah, I would have thought it was a clear answer, and that's the first time that I ever was open to the idea that maybe we don't need it because this was a surprising answer from a very nationally internationally prominent patent professor yeah and in fact there are there are actually aren't many papers favoring the pro patent system and they're pretty much universally um concluding that we can't prove it or it's it looks like it's a a a, a dead weight cost on society or something like that so all the papers are pretty much anti-patent so if you're an empiricist or utilitarian you looked at that, you would have to say they they haven't proven their case. Anti patent or anti pasto? What are we talking a an about? Anti pasto, which we're about to do. So, um, all right. So we're going to conclude. So tell us your uh, your law firm website because you are a very good patent lawyer, even though it's a corrupt system. I, I don't have a website. You used to have Gil Gilbreath.org, right? So I so if someone wants to hire you, they can just email me. Basically, they can email Stefan and ask for Mark. That's right. They can and Mark I'm sure, Gilbreth. I'm sure I'm gonna have to give Stefan like a 95 percent cut yeah. for the referrals. So, yeah, because uh, I'm a, I'm a I'm a, I'm a so greedy a greedy to, capitalist bastard. I'll have to increase the fee a hundred times, but it'll it'll be worth it. All right. Okay, Mark. Say goodbye. Uh, goodbye.